the beautiful names of beloved prophet the beautiful names of beloved prophet the beautiful names of beloved prophet الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers, welcome to another episode of our series أسماء النبي And inshallah, like every episode, we'll be mentioning beautiful, noble names of Rasulullah عليه السلام At any name of the Prophet عليه السلام, it is hoped that by mentioning them by doing the dhikr of Rasulullah alayhi salam, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend. So inshallah have this intention in mind whenever you listen to this program or any program mentioning the blessings, the greatness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that you are going to be drowned in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is the greatness of our Prophet that merely mentioning him, making dhikr of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is a cause of blessings to be descended insha'Allah. And like every episode at the beginning, I would just like to clarify that when naming your child, you should try and name your child after the Prophet ﷺ. Muhammad and Ahmad are beautiful names that you should name your child at birth. And thereafter, you can name your child any name of the Prophet ﷺ which the ulama permit. Meaning there are other beautiful names of the Prophet ﷺ, Sifati names, which are based on the characteristics of the Prophet ﷺ, but not every single name can be kept for a child. So, it's important to consult with the ulama to ask them about those names, and if they give permission and they say, yes, this name can be kept for other ummatis of the Prophet ﷺ, then that's fine, you can go ahead and name your child after that name. But if they say this is not allowed, then we should refrain from it as well. After all, our guidance comes from the ulama kiram, the true inheritors, of the Prophet So this is something we must bear in mind. The first name inshallah that we would like to introduce to you in this silsila, in this episode, is Al-Hatim. Now Al-Hatim has been read in two ways. There are two variations, Al-Hatim with a Kasra on the Ta and Al-Hatam with a Fatha on the Ta. Now it's from the beautiful names of the Prophet Al-Hatim. What's the meaning? Ahsanul Anbiya'i Khalqan wa Khuluqan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the most beautiful from amongst the Anbiya Alayhi in terms of creation, in terms of form, and in terms of character as well. So in terms of his blessed appearance, his physical features, he is the most beautiful from all Anbiya Alayhi And in terms of his character, his blessed habits, then again the Prophet Alayhi is superior to all Anbiya Alayhi He is more beautiful. Now this is what the name means, Al-Hatim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He created him unparalleled. Nobody in creation can come close to the beauty of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But one thing I'd like to mention before moving on, that every Prophet alayhi that came was blessed with husn, was no doubt beautiful. And I will narrate a hadith in this regard shortly as well. And every Prophet alayhi salam who came had beautiful character. But here what we're mentioning is from all the Anbiya alayhi salam who all possessed beauty and good character, the greatest in terms of beauty and physical form and character was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. So moving on to the hadith and denigrating or saying that any Prophet alayhi salam has a defect, has an aib, this would take someone out of the fold of Islam. To insult any Prophet alayhi salam any Prophet of Allah in any way, shape or form would be tantamount to disbelief. So this is very important to keep in mind. Now the, the hadith that I want to narrate to you, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is in the Sunan of Imam Tirmidhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, wajhan wa sawtan nabiyyukum. First of all, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned the Anbiya Alayhi Wasallam and how they were all beautiful and they uh, had beautiful appearances. And then he said, وَأَحْسَنُهُمْ وَجْهًا وَصَوْتًا نَبِيُّكُمْ But the most beautiful in terms of features, in terms of appearance, وَجْهًا in terms of face, and in terms of voice, 
is your Prophet, meaning Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So this is a hadith mentioned in Tirmidhi. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted this beauty to the Prophet alayhi salam and all Anbiya alayhi salam. Beautiful appearance, beautiful character. Why? Because they had to propagate the deen, the message that was given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they had beautiful appearances, because they had beautiful akhlaq, mannerisms, everything about them was filled with beauty. The people would have no excuse in disbelieving in them. They, they could not present any proof to not believe in them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them the most perfect of all his creation. And there is no hujja left for the one who does not believe in them. Because normally when a person doesn't have that beauty in terms of his appearance, his character, his mannerisms, the way he is, then people become mutanaffir or distant from him. And these qualities, beauty, good character, being a well-wisher, these qualities are what bring people close to one. And as for the Prophets, they possessed beauty and good character like none other. And our Prophet, as you just heard, is the most beautiful in terms of appearance and character as well. And Imam Busiri, rahmatullahi alayhi, in his famous Qasida Burda, he writes this as well. He writes a couplet in which he states, the Prophet وسلم, has attained superiority, is above and beyond all the Anbiya alayhim salam in terms of features, in terms of physical features, in terms of his beauty, and in terms of his characteristics as well. And the other Anbiya alayhim salam, they cannot even come close to Rasulullah in terms of his knowledge and his karam, meaning his generosity as well. Subhanallah. So this was the reason why the Prophet Sallallahu is called Al-Hatim, which as we mentioned can also be read as Al-Hatam. He is the most beautiful from all the Anbiya Alayhi Wasallam in terms of physical features, his appearance, his face, and in terms of his character as well. Subhanallah. Moving on, another name that we would like to include in our program is Al-Hamid. Al-Hamid. This is the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. And the ulama have said that from a grammar point of view, this is ism fa'il, meaning that blessed personality who praises, who praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the meaning. Meaning is the one who praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he ought to be praised, as he deserves to be praised. Now, we know that none in creation can truly Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that he does justice. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is incomprehensible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his that is so lofty, so elevated, that in creation we don't have the power to fully understand our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of his greatness. We say he is great, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself only knows how great he is in reality. So any ta'rif, any praise that we do falls short every single time. But in the entire creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that blessed personality who praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best way was our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning no other person can praise Allah like the Prophet alayhi salam does. And even this aqidah that I've just mentioned, this particular belief is found in the hadith. There's a hadith in Sahih Muslim about the difficulty of the Day of Judgment, people will just want accountability to begin. We know it's a day that is 50,000 years long, 25,000 years will have passed. When the hadith mentions, ulhimu, people will be inspired. They will go towards Sayyiduna Adam salam. they will ask him to intercede in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will say, I am worried about myself today, go towards Nuh salam. Like this, every Prophet will send to another Prophet until eventually Sayyiduna Isa salam will send everyone towards our beloved master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who will open the door of intercession. The hadith mentions that he alayhi salam will praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that none other had praised him like that before. This unique praise that you will hear on the day of judgment, no one else will have used those blessed kalimat that will be mentioned by our prophet alayhi salam to praise Allah. Nobody will have used them before. And he will be the first to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that manner. So unique, subhanallah. So, Al-Hamid, which comes from Hamd, and to praise. This is why our Prophet ﷺ has this beautiful name, Al-Hamid. 
And just one narration before I move on to the next name. It's mentioned that when say that Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha was expecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she heard a, a voice in a dream that said, Innaki hamalti bi khayril bariyah wa sayyidil alamin. You have in your stomach the best of creation and the master of the worlds. The hadith continues, فَإِذَا وَلَدْتِهِ فَسَمِّيهِ مُحَمَّدًا When you give birth to him, then name him Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. فَإِنَّ إِسْمَهُ فِي التَّوْرَاتِ حَامِدٍ وَفِي الْإِنْجِيلِ أَحْمَدٍ For indeed his name in the Torah is Hamid and his name in the Injil is Ahmad. Subhanallah. So in this narration as well, we're told that in Torah, the scriptures that were given to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam is Hamid, meaning the one who praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next name that we want to mention is Al-Fariq. Al-Fariq. The root words being Fa, Ra and Qaf. Al-Fariq. Now in regards to this name, Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi said, Huwa ismuhu sallallahu alayhi salam fi zabur that Al-Fariq is the name of the Prophet ﷺ in the Zabur, the Psalms. And we know that these were given to Sayyiduna Dawood ﷺ. These were revealed to Sayyiduna Dawood ﷺ. So in that particular scripture, in that book, the name of the Prophet ﷺ is Al-Fariq. Now what does it mean? Yafriqu bayn al-haqqi wal-batil. It refers to the individual who differentiates between the truth, al-haqq, and al-batil, falsehood. Now the Prophet ﷺ, his blessed zat, was that personality who differentiated between right and wrong, between truth and falsehood as well. This is why he is known as Fariq. When he came to the world, he showed people the right path, the path to Jannah, the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is obviously the path of haqq, the path of truth. And he told people to avoid the path of batil, falsehood, the path of Jahannam, the path of shaitan and wrongdoing. So this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is known as Al-Fariq. Another name of the Prophet ﷺ is Al-Fajr. And Al-Fajr, we know, refers to the morning. And uh, Islamically, we say the morning prayer, Al-Fajr. The Prophet ﷺ is also known as Al-Fajr. One of his names is Al-Fajr. Now, the definition of Al-Fajr is Shakku Shay, to split something, to rest asunder, to open something. And because the Fajr time in the morning, that appears after it splits the night and then the brightness of Fajr appears. Similarly, the Prophet ﷺ, when he arrived into the world, it was full of darkness beforehand, full of ignorance. And when the Prophet ﷺ came, he spread light throughout the globe. SubhanAllah. This is why he is called Fajr. And in the Quran, we have a surah, Surah Al-Fajr. The first verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath upon the morning the dawn time, and he says, Wal Fajr. And in regards to the meaning of this one interpretation given by Imam Suyuti rahmatullahi alayhi is, Waqila huwa Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That this refers to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as I just mentioned, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, he enlightened the world for the people. He showed people the right path. So the Prophet ﷺ is also known as Fajr. And one thing the ulama have mentioned, لِأَنَّهُ مِنْهُ تَفَجَّرَ iman. It is due to the Prophet ﷺ that the luminosity of Iman, faith, that spread. Alhamdulillah, when the Prophet ﷺ came, droves of people entered Islam and gained salvation for both worlds. Alhamdulillah. Now the last name that I would like to mention in the episode is Qutham. The Qaf has a Dhamma and the Tha has a Fatha. Qutham. And this is one name of the Prophet as well. What does it mean? The one who bestows and the one who grants in abundance. And this befits the Prophet as well. Why? Because the Prophet throughout his life gave. And he's still giving today as well, as we will hear. Now before that, a hadith, the Prophet said, and Imam Abu Ishaq al-Harbi narrates this hadith. And the Prophet said, Atani Malak, an angel came to me, and he said, Anta Qutham, you are Qutham. And then he mentioned, you are, in terms of character, very lofty, you are elevated, and you have a contented soul. So the angel is saying this regarding the Prophet ﷺ. So the key thing is, in this hadith, the angel referred to the Prophet ﷺ as Qutham. And what did it mean? I'ta, the one who grants, the one who bestows, the one who endows. And the Prophet ﷺ, we can never ever 
deny the fact that the Prophet والسلام, throughout his life gave, gave, and gave. Alhamdulillah. And so many ahadith are mentioned in this regard. The generosity, the sahaba of the Prophet وسلم, So much so that the sahaba radiallahu anhum, they saw on many occasions that the Bedouins would come from far away tribes, villages would come, and they would attain what they ask for. And in one narration, somebody came and he was given so much that he returned and said to his people that go and accept Iman, go and embrace faith in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he will grant you so much that you will never have to ask for any more. Meaning all your needs will be fulfilled. This was what was seen on a day-to-day -day basis during the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would give that which no other can give in creation. Meaning, he would give unique, unique things to the Ummah. In one narration, for example, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala, he is that Sahabi who narrated the most hadith. And he mentions in the early days, I was not able to retain and preserve and memorize the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So I came to the court of the Prophet sallam, and I complained about my weak memory. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't say, go away, pray to Allah, why are you coming to me? The Prophet sallam, said the words of the hadith, Ubsut rida akya Abu Huraira. O Abu Huraira, spread your shawl. And then the Prophet ﷺ gestured with his hands as if he was taking a heap of something from the air and then placed it into the shawl of Abu Huraira. And then he said to Sayyidina Abu Huraira place this shawl against your chest. So seemingly the, the hands were empty, but in those hands everything of both worlds is contained. Blessings of both worlds are contained. This is the aqeedah that we have. Our love for the Prophet ﷺ leads us to believe and to say that in the empty hands of Rasulullah ﷺ, everything can be attained. And Alhamdulillah, the Prophet ﷺ placed uh, what seemed like nothing in the uh, shawl of Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, he placed it against his chest and he says after that day, he never forgot a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Meaning he was granted a strong memory by Rasulullah ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ gave so much. Here is an example of how he gave an extraordinary thing, memory, who can give someone a strong memory? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can. And like this throughout his life, he showed miracles upon miracles. He gave and he gave and he gave. And alhamdulillah, he's still giving today. Why? Because the hadith states, Bukhari Sharif, that innama ana qasim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahu yu'ati, Allah bestows. Innama ana qasim. I'm the distributor. So the Prophet alayhi wa sallam distributes the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anyone who gains anything, gains it through the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the authority that Allah Azza wa has given him. This is the maqam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So one beautiful name of the Prophet alayhi sallam is Qutham. And lastly, Qutham means وَهُوَ الْجَمْعَ It means to gather. وَيُقَالُ لِلْرَجُلِ الْجَمْعُ لِلْخَيْرِ And it's said about an individual in whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gathered goodness, has gathered blessings. And the that of Rasulullah alayhi sallam is that that Qutham. Meaning in his blessed zat, his personality, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gathered an abundance of good, greatness, blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon his beloved that which he has not bestowed upon any other in creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a portion of that, a drop of that blessing that he has granted to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the end of the episode. Until next time, keep safe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all in both worlds. Amin bijahin nabi al amin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The beautiful names of beloved Prophet. The beautiful names of beloved Prophet. The beautiful names of beloved Prophet.